Okay, so now that we've gone through basically creating the sound, or a sound that I'm happy with, I want to show you how to very quickly create variations. And on top of that, I want to show you how to uh, structure it in a way that um, is neat and tidy and will make sure that everything is in sync if you have VFX that you're um, syncing to or an animation. Uh, so first of all, we need to find out the exact beat of the explosion. So for me, the most important thing is the explosion. So I'm just going to sync the explosion to, I don't know, let's say it. So here we have the start of the explosion. And we can just move anything that's um, separate from that. Um, let's move that to the beginning, right? So now we have the... And the... Also, I've just decided that I think this is a little bit too loud compared to the explosion, so I'm just going to drop it down a little bit. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, now the explosion sounds a bit bigger because the uh, sound that you associate with being close by uh, is a bit... There's one of two ways that you can, you can do this. You can either just uh, link everything to the 10 second and start from there. Or the reason why I like to do it this way is because it very clearly uh, demonstrates that there is a divide between what we actually want, which will be the explosion, and that there is something uh, happening just before. Uh, now is the important part, because we're going to use markers to actually help with the creation of variations, as well as showing other sound designers exactly what our thought process was. So first of all, we want to create a marker here. That's the start of the sound. Then we want to create a marker here, which is the start of the explosion. And then we can create a marker, say, here. Let's just tidy that up a bit. Uh, for when the tail begins. All right, so now we have three markers and we can write what they are. This we go. Uh, pre explore explosion and then explosion tail. And then what we want on top of that is boundary markers so that we can always create a similar size sound file. So select your loop and then create a um, cycle marker here. So now we have our variation and we can just label this uh, impact explosion or explore for short mortar, mortar shell. There we go. Uh, now what the really great thing is we can just start creating variations and we can do it every 10 seconds just to keep a nice even spacing. The as we know the explosion is um, on the 10 second mark so you just grab from there. Uh, oh, I'm also going to just turn this to seconds, there we go. And there we go. Easy. Let's say we want, let's say we want six. So now we have the explosion that we actually like. It's mixed and is arranged in a way that we see fit. Uh, what's also really cool is that we've dragged in all the samples that we want to use. So uh, we can just check what we've done here in terms of volume. This is minus 14. Let's just uh, match all the, all the volumes. So there we have it. Um, so now when we're pulling in all these samples, they're already going to be the right volume. Okay, now what's also interesting, so these ones were individual samples. Uh, so we have to kind of remix them or at least re-edit them. Uh, however, these ones have samples basically baked in them. So this is actually even easier. So all we have to do is drag uh, this and then what we can do is just shift these through. So we don't even need to re-edit them. We can just make sure that yeah, the samples line up nicely. I'm pretty sure this can be done on, uh, I mean, I know it can be done on Reaper. I'm pretty sure it can be done on Pro Tools as well.
Okay, so here we have a whole bunch of variations. Um, some of the samples that we have only had five uh, samples. Um, for example, I think this one only has like five samples. So the last one was missing a couple of samples in the line, but basically the easiest thing to do is just choose a random variation of one of the previous um, samples. So I chose this one to duplicate here, and then you just choose a different one, maybe this one to duplicate here, and now we have the sixth variation. And it's fine to duplicate these things because all of these are different, all of these are different, and this one's different, so it, ha it might have some similar frequencies of similar tones, but uh, in general um, it's better to have more variations uh, based on uh, the samples that actually do have six different recordings here. And if we really wanted to, we could even duplicate, or we could even duplicate, you know, the first half and then, you know, maybe like these three go over here and then these three come here and, you know, shuffle things up like that. Uh, but we don't need so many variations uh, of the explosions. So uh, now it's just a case of neatening everything up and what really helps with these markers is I've created a shortcut in um, Nuendo, but uh, yeah, there's usually ways to toggle um, how you see markers. Um, and now we can just see uh, all the marker lines. So it's super easy now to line up exactly where you want uh, your sounds to be. So this is the explosion. We remember here, this is the, that's the far away sounding explosion. We just line that up uh, nice and neat on the transient on the line. This one, this was the, the base. I think we lined that up with the uh, tail. Let's just go back to the very first one. Yep, so the tail was the base and the uh, fire. So here we go, tail, base and fire. And I didn't like this little click here. I'm just gonna make sure that's gone there as well. This was also the sweetener. I wonder if that was, I think that was slightly staggered as well. It's like two frames away. Um, and these, I mean, these ones don't matter too much uh, because they're just kind of extra frequencies to get that kind of explosion, white noise, extra uh, mess in there. So let's see what that sounds like. Compared to the original. So everything is perfectly in sync, everything is well timed, it sounds like it's the same sound, the same genre, the same category, the same explosion, the same grenade, whatever. Um, but they're completely different variations, so you're not going to get this um, fatigue of hearing the same sound uh, over and over again. And it took me literally 15 minutes to create these six variations. I'm just going to tidy them all up now, which will probably take me a few minutes extra. Um, so once you've created the actual sound, creating the variations of that sound is super simple. You just have to make sure when you're bringing in the samples, you bring in samples that have um, these multiple sounds and you use them accordingly. Uh, additionally, if there are sample packs with that have individually named them, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, uh, like these ones, I believe, yeah, this is just a single one. Uh, then just bring in all of them, you know, you can find one cool explosion But if the sample pack has one two three four five in it Just bring them all into the session immediately that way you're not searching for the same explosion later and you're also not um, Struggling to find similar explosions or similar sounds um, When you're creating variations later. Okay, so now I have all my variations the six different ones um, As you can see actually some of these are a lot shorter than the original one um, but they still sound pretty good, so I'm just gonna drop this tail. It doesn't need to be so long, and it's gonna save us space by just shortening it a bit. By space, I mean memory inside the game. Uh, and also, more importantly, it saves voice count. The shorter your, your audio samples are, 
that means the sooner they'll be able to free up a voice for um, something else, another gunshot, another explosion, etc. So it's important to keep things tight. So let's just see how they sound. Awesome. Six variations, all very neat. Uh, also, something that I would like to stress is just the importance of keeping your samples to these markers. So for these ones, it doesn't really matter too much. It's just a bit of uh, chaos, but they're all landing within this uh, explosion. Then the tail is landing from the start of this marker and the pre-explosion is starting from here. The really awesome thing about this is if for whatever reason we wanna make super complex sounds, which I wouldn't advise because it's not very performant in terms of voice count, but we could just split these into three different samples and have you know the pre-explosion be a sample uh, that gets randomized. We could have the explosion, that's a sample that gets randomized. And then we could have this sort of boomy tail also be randomized. That way you get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9, 27 different variations essentially um, with everything being randomized together. And then you have on top of that modulation, so you can have really, really detailed sounds. Um, however, I would advise against it unless there is a very specific reason to do that. So something that I did forget to include is the debris. And debris is very important with explosions, obviously, because what happens when something explodes, it creates a lot of dust and rocks. So because the game that I'm currently working on is the cycle and a lot of it is outdoors and muddy and dirty, I'm going to stick to rocks and dirt and mud and dust uh, and steer away from having metal or glass or anything that could be associated with areas that might have metal and glass. And the good thing about dirt and rocks is that it can be bricks, it can be yeah anything heavy uh, landing on the floor and so it's a little bit more generic, you can use it for any situation. Uh, whereas obviously glass and metal, you would expect something glass and metal to be close by. <laughs> 